Come on over to our valley where boys run free. Run to the lush green meadows in your shorts. Brother John will be your guide in a summer of indescribable earthly delight. Welcome, 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 all truth seekers, to the one podcast that covers only that which is most important in your world. And in doing so, we have but one objective, truth. Are there things that are more important than others in this world? Absolutely, and our next guest is going to take us to that exact spot. Quick disclaimer, the use of the term ignorance on this podcast is not an insult. It's an invitation. It's an invitation to become informed. We all can and should become informed. Why? Ignorance is of epidemic proportions on planet Earth because we have been lied to by those in power. Our media cannot be trusted, and anyone who thinks already understands that. Right? Wrong. Therefore, this podcast is dedicated to the willfully ignorant that are too selfish to listen or share this podcast. Again, that's not an insult. It's an invitation. It's an invitation to be free. Trust us on this one. It's the epidemic of ignorance, not evil, that causes the problems in this world. Why? The ignorant outnumber the evil 100 to 1. And that's a problem, shall we say, of epidemic proportions. But that will all change starting with our next guest. Hello again, my friends. Let me interrupt the podcast here to set the stage for a better understanding. I'll be conversing with a lifelong buddy of mine to see if he can grasp the basic concept of the facts. Again, the facts is a project that I've spent a good deal of time trying to perfect. So now it's important that the concept itself can be simplified and understood by others, starting with my buddy here, Mike. So moving forward, The first goal is to get him to understand that the facts are first and foremost a semantics or a rhetoric project, okay? This means that the entire facts project starts with the meaning and power of certain chosen words. That's right, that's it. That's the main point. The facts seek to create a new narrative or chosen words, but a new narrative that's accurate and solidified in proven truth. Make sense? Of course. So in this podcast, I'm gonna start with the facts glossary first. That is, we will first be understanding and defining some of the most important words or concepts that establish the facts in this project. Now, one last thing before we talk to Mike, the impeccability of the word. Have any of us ever heard this concept before that words are impeccable and powerful? The word impeccable means in accordance with the highest standards. So that makes sense. But do we really understand the power in words? Well, rest assured, neither did I. I too have just recently learned of this concept and it turns out this impeccability of the word concept was the final piece to the facts puzzle. There's no question, it's an absolutely crucial concept and hopefully you'll soon understand just why. Now, the impeccability of the word is a concept that's found in the book called The Four Agreements. The book was introduced to me by one of the most remarkable human beings on planet Earth and that's not an exaggeration. This man has dedicated his life to the pursuit of provable truth and his decades of discoveries are available for the world to see on his rather sizable platform called Skeptico. Yes, this man is Alex Sakaris, and in my humble opinion, his contributions to humanity are no less significant than that of Albert Einstein. Why? 
Einstein and others gave us truth. Alex has dedicated his life to uncovering and protecting that truth in a massive sea of deception. So, hey, let's move forward and see if I can get Mike to buy into it. Beautiful. All right. Mikhail, how are you, my friend? Never better. All right. Never uh, better. Mike has uh, agreed to be one of my volunteers here in terms of, of uh, uh, it's only your it's only your podcast. We didn't expect you to know what the what the topic yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I know what the topic is. It's just uh, we've just been through a lot, Mike, to get here. I know. I know. All right. All right. Well, anyways, we're gonna restart. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I don't know. Hey, welcome to the podcast, Mike. Woo-hoo! Thanks for being on it, my friend. All right. The Great gentleman you're looking at right here is one of my good buddies. I call him Mikhail, even though that's not uh, probably. That's here. Actually, it's a Czechoslovakian pronunciation of Michael. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Czechoslovakian. So yeah, that's a beautiful it. thing. All right, Michael. Michael has agreed to take a moment here and allow. Uh, allow me to introduce this concept to him. It's a concept I've been working on a while. I've written a book. It's called The Facts. From that, I've extracted certain data and information. I'd like to present it to Michael and see what he thinks. All right. So, Mike, with that, I'm going to share my computer real quick. All right. Let me get rid of that part, though, before I do and go share. All right. We are here. Let's go to here. There we go. All right. So basically what it's doing is it's switching. Uh, This is a brand new podcast and Mike has agreed to to let me do a little testing on him. So those of you uh, that aren't watching, you can't necessarily see, but I've got an image in front of me that talks about the podcast. And it's basically a podcast I'm calling Ignorant to Informed with the Top 10 Facts. I'm making this... uh, grandiose assessment that says there are certain things that are more important in this world than others. And we can compile and edit those to where those things would be agreed upon by all of humanity. So it's a super audacious, kind of a bizarre claim, but stick with me. I think I can pull it off. So this is showing the top 10 facts in here. It's drawing a comparison with the Ten Commandments, which allows me to get the human mind thinking not only in uh, just simple day-to-day terms, but to really consider the uh, spiritual realities as well as the physical realities of their life. On here, there's an overli- uh, overriding claim that says it's all about freedom and control. We'll get to that later. There's also a spot in here that talks about dangerous human beings, and we'll get to that at some point, too. It'll all make sense. But what I want to show you, and anybody that might be watching the podcast, is this is a process that I've developed, and it's all designed to use the word, the, the human word, to change the perception of the human mind. So if you look at this list, it's a a host of different things that I'm going to run by Mike real quickly and see if uh, I can't get him on the same page as I am. Okay, now when I stop sharing my screen here, we're going to start with this, Mike. And this is where we're going to have a conversation about the difference between an indoctrination and uh, cognitive thinking. So let me stop sharing my screen. And as we move forward, I'll put those terms up so people can see them. Okay. All right. So, Mike, uh, I'm going to give you some some different definitions and terms. Because, again, let me put this preface in there. There was a book that was written that was called The Four Agreements. Okay, it was really a a popular book, but even though it was one of the most popular books in the world, 99.9% of the population has never heard of it. Point is that in this book, he proves the impeccability of the word. He's saying that 
our realities as we perceive them are constructs of words that our mind has determined mean a certain thing, and that's what creates our reality. Now, I know that's big and convoluted, but stay with me. So for the sake of our discussion term, when I use the term indoctrination, Mike, indoctrination basically means anything that somebody has told you to believe. We're all indoctrinated by our parents once we're born. We're indoctrinated by the school systems. We're indoctrinated by our friends, by our religions, that type of thing. Does that make sense to you, Mike, that an indoctrination no. might be or, or is described as something you've been told to believe in no uncertain terms? In other words, indoctrination isn't saying question what I'm saying. It's saying believe what I'm saying. Make sense to you? Yep. Being talked to. Being talked Got it. to. Got it. And converse to that is what's called cognitive thinking. This is where I'd say a person would get a proposal. And instead of saying, Mike, you should think this way. Hey, Mike, here's your options. OK, makes sense. Mm -hmm. OK, cognitive thought. All right. Let me put my glasses on right here. OK, so again, indoctrination is a process. Here's the actual definition, the process of teaching a person or group to accept accept a set of beliefs uncritically, uncritically. So for the sake of the facts, indoctrination is a bad thing. It's a terrible thing because you're being uncritical of what you've been told. Understood? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Converse to that is called cognitive thought. This is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. So. It's not telling you what to think. It's the processes of you acquiring your own knowledge. Make sense? It does. Okay. So now I'm reading from a script here that says the facts are not an indoctrination. They establish the cognitive thought required to recognize and possibly avoid indoctrination. Make sense? Yep. Okay, it's saying that if you have this cognitive thought process, you are not, you won't be subjected to indoctrination because you can witness indoctrination as it's happening. You're above it. Make sense? Yep. All right, cool. The facts force the human mind into frequency of frequencies of truth that reside above all indoctrinations. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so indoctrination could be considered all of the human beliefs within the atmosphere on planet Earth. They're all some sort of indoctrination. And up above that indoctrination, up above by possibly the UFOs or the creator or whatever goes beyond our intelligence level, that is above all human indoctrination. Make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so... In these truths, it, what it says, it says uh, the human mind is into frequencies that reside above all indoctrinations. These truths dictate the terms and conditions of all subordinate indoctrinations. So the truths that I'm hoping to uh, illustrate up above indoctrination, these are the truths that dictate the terms of the indoctrination. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Uh, by subject, so all by subordinate indoctrinations, okay, those that uh, are, are of planet Earth, we're talking about all human subjective beliefs. This includes all beliefs, religious, political, etc. It's making a statement that says all human belief right now, all of it is a result of an indoctrination, not self evident truth. Makes sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next one is just talking in terms of explain and complain. It's a, it's a crucial thing. If, if I've got the definition of an explain and it says to make an idea or situation or problem clear by describing it in more detail or revealing rev relevant facts and ideas. Okay. By contrast, complain is expressing dissatisfaction or annoyance about something. So from my perspective, the world is caught in a cesspool of complaining and nobody's explaining what to do about it. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So in the case of this podcast, there is zero complaining. 
We just explain so we can solve problems. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, next, on to grandiose terms. Okay, the word grandiose, and I'll put these on the, you know, I'll edit them in there. So, but the, basically the term grandiose is saying that I'm using a term uh, to exaggerate its importance or beyond its its need. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. know everybody says grandiose, but there's oh, but semantics. Yeah, yeah, semantics to it that says if you're using a grandiose term, in essence, you're using it and you're full of shit. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. So moving forward with the facts, we have what are called grandiose terms and they need to be defined because if we're going to establish a narrative, again, we're talking about the letters in a word, the words in a sentence, the spoken word. Okay. Of course, we have to establish the meaning of those words. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to be using terms like the holy grail, the free world, the tree of life, the Great Awakening. What do these terms mean to you? Do you have any preconcerved? Like, if I were to say to you, Mike, tell me what the, what you believe the Holy Grail oh, is. They're they're all grandiose terms that are kind of above and beyond. I mean, the Great Awakening is 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 almost beyond comprehension. I mean, it, it's 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 something that happened happens that very difficult for a, the typical human to even c comprehend um okay. the grail is 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 the is the end all be all i mean that that is the epitome that's the that's that's the it's almost unreachable um Got it. So, so in your world would you say the holy grail is of the physical world or is just a, a spiritual anomaly type um, illusion oh, type? I, no I've, I've lost the spiritual definition of that a while ago um I, I use it as, as as a grandiose term for something that that's exceedingly difficult, if not impossible, to attain. Okay, um, I love it. I love it. And there is a search for it. For what reason? Why would someone search for the Holy Grail? Well, it depends on what the Holy Grail is. I mean, you you you, you know, I, I use it all the time where I say. Um, you know, let's let's find the holy grail solution to this problem. Well, that's the impossible, difficult solution that that exists. Let's at least you know try to get closer to to the solution. So that would be you know I'm using the holy grail as a uh, I don't know if it's metaphorically or whatever, but yeah. um, no, I love it. I think that's but, that's but religion. Probably... Yeah, religion wise, uh, you know, the, the holy grail is something totally different, and and you know, I, right, I can't right. Speak but but the beauty is you've given us some thought. And the rationale behind your thought, I think, makes complete sense. Yeah, that's why it's so hard to find. It is the end all yeah. <laughs> of of what might be it. All right, beautiful. So that's good. It gets a uh, gets you thinking along the same lines. Uh, uh, what I'm going to run through here real quick. Okay, so since we're talking about the Holy Grail, let me try to paint a picture of it. Okay, the way it's defined in terms of this new narrative. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Um, envision Earth, okay? And on this planet, certain things have been proven. Proven beyond, I mean, unless somebody is unwilling to consider the evidence, it's been proven. Okay. And things along the lines of UFOs or what be it, these are things that the only people who disagree with them being real are the ones who refuse to consider the evidence. Make sense? Mm hmm so they've chosen through their own volition to not let that truth be part of their reality. Make sure. sense? Yep. Okay. So here, in terms of the Holy Grail, uh, this is the way it's defined with the facts. The Holy Grail is a protected portal to self-evident truth in an ocean of deception. Okay. So let's apply it to what you just spoke about. All right. We're on this planet. We're immersed in indoctrination and dogma. And somewhere in this cesspool of confusion and untruths is what this portal above it into the light of what's proven true. OK, so that's what the Holy Grail is, according to the facts. Now, you don't have to necessarily remember that. I'm going to run through a couple other uh, grandiose terms 
that'll help you get right on the path because now we're speaking a language and we're basically running through the glossary at the front of the book rather than the end of it. Okay, so let me throw a couple more your way and I'll put these on the screen so people can see them. First of all, selfishness, okay? According to the facts and according to the evidence, there is a spiritual world. There's a physical world and there is a spiritual world. And if you look at what Einstein and all of our greatest physicists have concluded, and that is there is no physical world. Physical properties are an illusion in our mind. When they look deep into the atom and deep into its inside, it turns out it's nothing but pure energy and mostly space. So the inside of a diamond would look like the universe to you and I, nothing but space and tiny little specks if we were the size of an electron. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, with that said, on the flip side, there is a spiritual world. It has been proven to anybody willing to think. Okay. And the spiritual world is basically your conscious soul, the energy that is inside you that causes your heart to be, okay? That energy is alive and it cannot be destroyed. And so it's a spiritual, and spiritual energy is the opposite of physical energy. Physical energy are magnetics, or electromagnetics. Opposites attract, you know, your pro and your negative attract. In the spiritual world, it's the opposite. Positive attracts positive and negative attracts negative. Now, I went through that in detail because truth be told, this is what selfishness is. Your conscious soul was alive before you were a human being and it will be alive after you, your human life is over. Your conscious soul has attached itself or has been encased by physical energy glommed onto you. And in your case, it's a bit... Okay. Don't even go there. <laughs> Don't go. <laughs> um, and so what it is, is uh, your conscious soul is navigating the energy we consider this planet. And in doing so, okay, you have your own perception of that energy. You do not share that perception with anybody else. So selfishness in the simplest sense is you demanding that others, whether it be your wife or your kids or your nation or the world conforms to your completely unique perception of this energy around us. Okay, so selfishness would be Adolf Hitler. He's got a perception of this energy. Adolf Hitler's conscious soul is no different than mine. Other than that man was so selfish, he demanded the rest of the world conform to his perception of reality. On the flip side of that, humility is the opposite. It's simply saying, Mike, you've got a perception, I've got a perception, and instead of demanding that I conform to your perception, you simply recognize that we are supposed to have different perceptions of the world. You are conscious that it's just an illusion. And my illusion is as important as yours. Make sense? The difference yeah. between selfishness and humility? Perfect. Yeah. Next term is evil. So an evil person. Now, again, selfishness is the manifestation of evil on planet Earth. Now, you don't. Here's an important distinction. Have you ever heard people say, I'm spiritual, I'm not religious? Yeah. What does that mean to you? Something that's too complicated for me to articulate. Okay, fair enough. Let well, me I mean, well r r religious has, you know, is the stories, the the, the rules, the, the commandments, the, the the drinking of the wine, the, this is how this is done, and everything else. Whereas a spiritual person will just look at a tree and say, my goodness, how did that become so beautiful? And how did that you know, whatever. So, so you can be spiritual without being religious for sure. And you can be spiritual and religious at the same time. And you can do kind of the everything in between. Got it. Couldn't agree more. The way I summarize it is anything religious includes the religious dogma. That's okay. it. Okay. It's in other words, I, when you hear people go, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. That's them partitioning themselves away from the dogma that's affiliated with that belief system. Got it. Right? Yeah. And many people do that. Mm -hmm. Hey, 
I'm one that does it too. I go, hey, I don't buy into any religious dogma, but I'm a spiritual guy. And so for the sake of the facts, spirituality is like your uh, awakened people. How many people do you see meditating to try to find frequencies of understanding and love? You see the Buddhas in the, in the you know, what be it? But there's a host of human beings out there that the dogma is the least of their interest. What right. matters is they're certain there are frequencies of love and more to this picture that they can take their mind away from this sentence that is humanity to go seek. Make sense? Yep. All right. So kind of in a simple sense. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let me do, let me move forward with this. Okay. And so again, because it's proven that there are forces that are fighting in the spiritual world for your conscious soul. Okay. In other words, your conscious soul is navigating trillions of frequencies from the deepest, darkest frequencies of fear to the highest lit frequencies of love. And as you do that, that's what's causing your emotions and everything. Whether you do drugs, whether it's Delta 8, what be it, you're constantly switching frequencies with your mind. And that's causing you to go in and out of the light. Does it make sense just in a theoretical sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, when you do that, okay, again, we have what's called our own volition, which means we can make our own decisions. So every decision you make, it's going to be forced into a yin-yang scenario that says it's either going to take me into the darkness to the light, but it won't always be the same. I'm going to switch frequencies with every decision. Make sense? Yes. Theory-wise. Okay. So... The next, so again, when I'm selfish, each decision I make that is about my paradigm takes me into the darkness. Each decision I make that's humble, that accommodates somebody else's thing, uh, somebody else's paradigm moves me into the light. It's quintessential Jesus. It doesn't matter if his name was Jesus, Jack, or Donald Trump. What matters that is what came from his mouth said that through giving, you will receive joy. And that doesn't matter who said it. That is proven true again and again and again. Make sense? Yep. Okay, fair enough. All right, so the converse of that is evil. Evil is basically a conscious soul that's on this planet that has zero regard for anybody else's paradigm. Know anybody like that? Adolf Hitler? Anybody yeah. else come to mind? What about that little pudgy leader in North Korea? Yeah. Okay. So but could you? Know, uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, this is a guy that I'm guessing wakes up each morning, looks at his fleet of limousines, decides he wants one in pink, kills somebody if it isn't delivered by 10. Okay. Yeah. This guy has no regard. All right. I'm guessing. Now, for all I know, he's the most humble guy and he's nothing but captive. He's got a gun to his head the whole time. I just don't know. But the point is, is that you can be so selfish and so in, you know, so deep in your own paradigm that you can have an utter disregard for everybody else on planet Earth. And that's what we're defining as evil. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So that means we can name evil human beings by name. True. Right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now. The uh, tree of life. Okay, the way it's described here is the tree of life is humanity's cooperative collection, simplification, and the prioritization of that which is unmistakably proven true. Okay, now that was a lot. So think of it in these terms. The, what is the tree of life? There's a biblical definition. The tree of life actually is early on in the book of Genesis. What are they talking about? Does anybody know? Does anybody care? Okay. And truth be told, there it is something. And according to the facts, it's this collection and prioritization of self-evident truth. And we'll get into them soon. Again, I'm talking about the top 10 facts and you don't know what it means. But it's simply saying that the tree of life, which gives life 
to all of the universe. The tree of life is nothing but a tree of truth. And from that truth, we obtain life. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see. I told you there's some grandiose stuff going on here, my friend. All right. Free world. Free world is not of the physical world. If I were to ask you right now, where's the free world on planet Earth? Could you tell me? I don't think it exists. Does okay. It? Uh, not that I am. I'm not free. No. Well, and we're born into rules, you know. Uh, that's that's just the way it is. You, you're, you're born, you're under rules. So the, the, the free world is not of this world. The free world is a frequency of the mind. And the free world exists in frequencies above the cesspool of confusion on planet Earth. Does that make sense that we can take our mind through what process up above the dogma, the confusion, the deception, up into frequencies, let's say where the UFOs are hanging out, and there we will find truth. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. I just got but let's uh this is this is good because uh <laughs> Um, all right, so now the next thing is the facts. So again, this is where it's good to try it because it, you know the facts is is in here and, and it makes sense. It's basically the facts is an acronym for finding answers that confirm truth about selfishness. Okay, and facts is important because it's a word that, when defined accurately along these terms, obviously anytime that word is used, it's got carries a different meaning that it does in terms of the intel, intellectual pollution today. So. Again, where I just I just explained that selfishness in its simplest sense is we have to understand that we're, we're nothing but conscious souls of spiritual energy living what's called lucid dreams on this planet Earth. And in doing so, if we navigate this planet demanding others conform, that's what makes us selfish. And to be selfish is there's a spiritual force tugging on us, telling it's about us. We've been screwed. That, that's the way it should be. On the flip side of that, somebody's tugging on you saying that's not the case. That's not the case. Now, when you look at the acronym of the facts, finding answers that confirm truth about selfishness, this whole endeavor is to understand more about selfishness through evil and how it's manifesting itself on planet Earth. Makes sense? Kind of a tall order, but it makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. Last one is this. Actually, uh, it's called universal dichotomies. All intelligent life with volition, freedom of choice, is accountable to the yin-yang dichotomies of creation, right? You know what I mean by yin-yang dichotomy, right? Opposite. I mean, in terms of... For every action, there's equal but opposite reaction. There you go. Okay. And it's saying that, that uh, freedom versus control, like I just talked about, selfishness is freedom you hey you live your life control is selfish saying you live it the way i want this dichotomy okay is established as right from wrong in all universes including ours so if i were to say you're familiar with star wars i presume if i were to ask you darth vader luke skywalker who's for control who's for freedom Vader control Skywalker for freedom. Right, right. I right. I mean, that's as <laughs> obvious. Yeah. That's that's it's called been a while. common sense. <laughs> it's been a while. And so, when you look at these dichotomies, okay, the top four are humility versus selfishness, freedom versus control, right versus wrong, and good versus evil. Okay, could you see how human decisions are going to fall on one of the sides and that that is selfish is also control, wrong, and evil. That which is humble is also freedom, right, and good. That which is free is also humble, good, and right. Does that make sense to you yeah. that these dichotomies have the black and white uh aspect to them polar opposites right and so as a, a person with volition or consciousness navigates the universe we're forced to be in included in those dichotomies make sense mm -hmm. all right cool last thing and then we'll wrap up here the spectrum the spectrum of a dichotomy 
because you've got you got each end of a dichotomy is black white and you're either a, a very 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 black very very white but it's a spectrum across that you're you start getting dark charcoal gray agree gray. but it's moving what's important is uh if you if, just in a physics world if you t hear the term radiation mm -hmm. not everybody knows what that means but radiation is the measurement not of the energy but the movement of the energy the movement of the energy exactly. so in the case of uh this in the case of your conscious soul and navigating this spiritual world it doesn't matter whether or not you're way in the darkness or in the gray or what matters is what direction you're moving Got it. Okay, cool. Now, last thing, and we talked about this. I don't know if this was another one, but the great awakening and the tipping point. Okay, when you talk in terms of the great awakening, okay, and have you heard the tipping point part or is that new to you? Uh, I read the book, The Tipping Point, and I understand that the cool. concept. Yeah. So you get the concept. It's yeah. basically somebody's theory. It's going, it's saying, going, it's going, and then finally there's just enough mass or just enough circumstances or just enough something to, to, to tip it. If it you stopped got it. one inch before that, nothing would have changed. The Beatles would have, if the Beatles wouldn't have practiced and had that one extra gig in Germany when they were off doing their thing, if they, if they missed one gig there, they would have never been the Beatles. They would have come back to, to England. Nobody would have heard of them, but they did that one extra thing where they were discovered and the rest is history. Agreed, 100%. So now on a biblical scale, this is saying, again, when you think of the awakened, not everybody understands that, but there's a term for that that's saying, listen, somebody that's awakened basically understands the spiritual aspects of this. They understand this frequency of love, and they're able to take a more God's eye view looking down. That's my understanding of what somebody, when they talk in terms of the great awakening, they're saying that at some point... Every all uh, at the tipping point again is just enough human beings that could be 10 percent, 11 percent, what be it, but enough human beings have discovered whatever it is that makes them awakened. And because that one person also discovered it, now it's going to tip. And the great awakening means that all of humanity, their paradigms will be turned upside down. OK, yeah. that's basically what it's saying is we have to revisit our entire premise of our existence. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we are now awakened. All right. And this is a perfect segue for us to go into the next one and reconvene, because that's exactly what I. Wait, what? Up. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, the 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 great awakening. When I, when I pin people down saying, what is the great awakening? What are we awakened to? What are we discovering? You're saying I'm being awakened. Awakened to what? And I know that answer. It's truth. It's truth. It's the hard, cold reality that your conscious soul was alive before you were born. And that you will be alive after. And that this planet is ruled by globalists. Probably 10 most important ones that have each other's cell phones. And that intelligence in UFO or ET, or however you want to describe it, has been proven again and again and again and again. It's just humanity refuses to incorporate that wisdom into their perception of reality. They are asleep in their lucid dream. Awaken. The great awakening is, holy shit, the UFOs are real. Why is that data classified? Well, because demons rule the planet. Mm. Making sense? Yeah. <laughs> so I told you to be fun. It's it's crazy, crazy shit on one hand. On the other side, I've there's nothing that has come from my mouth that isn't pure common sense. Show tell me one thing I've said that anybody my 15-year-old kids could completely comprehend. There's nothing new here. All it is is this is the shit we don't get. This is the part they hold for the Great Awakening. What the facts aims to do is to put this shit front and center when you're three years old, my friend. Hey, those are your parents. Guess what? The only thing you have in common with your parents, little five-year-old, is you were born into the world with their DNA. 
You are a conscious soul that has nothing in common with your parents. That's the great awakening, my friend. I love it. Well, we're getting down there, my friend. Uh, we're less than a minute. We're probably less than 30 seconds. All right, we're going to wrap it up. I'll, I'll I'll send it to you. I mean, I'll, I'll. but anyways, it's a start. We can dump it. I mean, it's obviously not our best effort, but now at least I've been through it. I realize how fucking choppy it is. I realize how much information it is. Oh, there's tons. Yeah, but again, if 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 the uh um if the information is of value, again, I use all these grandiose terms as saying, hey, this is more important than the Bible, listen, uh, all these different things.